as with any tragedy or devastating event, you can never be the same afterwards. This is true for me, a Syrian immigrant, as my homeland, once so beautiful and vibrant, became a dangerous war zone. Before 2011, Syria was one of the safest countries in the world. It was a beautiful, peaceful country. I grew up in Aleppo, the largest city in Syria. I had a nice life and a great job. I was surrounded by friends and family. My concerns back then, like many other Syrians, would be which book to read next, which concert to go to, and when to spend time with friends. This is me with my sisters and my mom. And this is with me with my daughter, Angelina, at our home in Aleppo. The war in Syria has raged on for over seven years now. One of the most destructive wars in modern times. It has caused catastrophic destruction to the old city of Aleppo, one of the oldest cities in the world and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It has displaced more than 10 million people, almost half the Syrian population. Not long after the war had started, my seven-year-old Angelina and I came to visit my sister in Boston. While we were here, Overnight, Aleppo became the center of the Syrian conflict, and the bad news kept coming. And eventually, I decided I could not return, and Boston became my new home. The first two years were pretty tough. While figuring out how to start my life over here, I was constantly watching my past being ripped apart. My beautiful city of Aleppo was being destroyed street by street and one neighborhood after another. My friends back home would tell me about horrifying times of fear, danger, and panic. I could feel their pain and anguish as they told me how every morning they would say a last goodbye when they send their children to school not knowing if they would return safely home. Checking on everyone in Aleppo all the time caused me to live two lives, one here safe and sound, and one there in fear and despair. I barely slept through the night, reading article after article and watching the news all the time. This is a photo of one of the old houses in Aleppo before the war. And this is what the war has done to it. And here is my friend's mother, Wafa. She burst into tears as she saw the scale of destruction to the old city of Aleppo, where we used to get together in cafes and to walk with the many tourists and the old market. Watching Syria in the news was very hard for me, as my homeland was unrecognizable to me. I deeply missed my life back home, and I felt the guilt of being away from my country and friends in such times. At some point, I realized I could not be the same person I used to be, unless I allowed my Syrian heritage and memories to embrace my American aspirations and future. I decided to present an image of my Syria, to bring into focus the spirit of my country and its people instead of the war and the politics. So I decided to make one simple step and I asked my American friends to connect me with their faith leaders and school teachers to tell them about my country, Syria, and my religion, Islam. Before 
I was private about my religious practice, and I never thought I would be publicly talking about it. But then, I didn't feel the need to do so, as I wasn't a minority, stigmatized with many false stereotypes. One talk led to another, and the people here were eager to know more. The connections I made with others and the image I was able to present of my country were critical to my personal journey towards healing. They gave me a purpose and allowed me to actually have a life here in the US. I carried Syria not only in my heart, but also on my car. <laughs> and to my surprise, this license plate brought many smiles my way. Besides the many lovely notes left on my car from time to time, many people stopped me to tell me that they've been to Syria once and they loved it, or that they ha their mother is half Syrian, or simply that they loved my license plate. At the same time, Others were making simple steps as well. Not long ago, I met Kyra Martinez, an American flight attendant who, on her own time, began to help refugees in Greece, where many Syrians were placed after an arduous crossing of the Mediterranean Sea. She was excited about getting art supplies to the refugees in the camp. I have to admit, I was cynical about her idea. I thought, art, how could art be helpful to displaced people? Well, I discovered I was wrong. Kyra's simple step was a seed that did not take long to bear fruit. The children expressed their feelings through drawing and painting, and guess what? Weary adults joined into both creating powerful artwork. And Cairo's job enabled her to show the artwork in more than 45 cities around the world, where people like you and me went to see them, admired them, and bought them. This one simple step became a worldwide nonprofit organization called Love Without Borders benefiting hundreds of refugees. I also met a school teacher who took the step to ask her students to simply write letters to children in the camp. She and her students were amazed by the effort the refugee children made to write them back in English with lots of hearts decorating their letters. These simple efforts to connect with the refugees empowered them to focus on their capabilities and resilience rather than limitations and despair. I've seen the children in the camp, and I saw their resulting smiles, and not only the tears. And here is my Syrian friend's daughter, Luna, playing in a quintet. Luna and her friends could have played in a safe area or in a beautiful theater that was not destroyed by the war. Instead, she and her friends decided to play music here in the middle of the rubble and to bring life and art back to the ruins. Syrians have suffered loss for seven years, and the pain of seeing the destruction the war has caused will never go away. But those young people are getting together to send the message that hope, creativity, and art will defeat the war and heal suffering. And as the war is winding down in Syria, signs of life continue to grow. And I'm thrilled to tell you that this month, they are having a TED Talk in Aleppo just like the one we're having here now. I 
I'd give anything to go back in time to what my life used to be before 2011, to be my former self again, but I can't. My ultimate wish is still for the war to end in Syria. But I've come to see now that every kind action is important, no matter how big or small, no matter if it uplifts one soul or a thousand. I started by connecting with people, telling them about Syria. Kaira took art supplies to refugees. The teacher asked the students to write letters, and the young musicians played music in the rubble. These were all simple steps, but they've made an immeasurable impact on the lives of many. I now know the power of a simple step, and I wonder what simple step you might take in the face of a heartbreak in your own world. Thank you.